Hello lovely people, it's Hila here, Saturday Night Stitch and today's post I just wanted to share with you a little bit of my vintage sewing machine collection. Now this video was recorded over a year ago but I've only just got around to doing it so do bear with me. So first off we have a Singer 285K 3 quarter sewing machine. So it's called a 3 quarter sewing machine because it isn't as big as your standard sewing machines. As you can see it is quite small. I picked this up at a local charity shop for only £20 and it came with some accessories and it was in decent enough condition for me to think, you know what, it's really cute, I'm going to add it to my collection. So it takes a 66, a class 66 bobbin, which is a little bit different to the other machines which take a size 15 body, uh, bobbin. In terms of its actual sewing capacity, it is not the best compared to the other singers um, that we have because this is a later manufacture from um, the late 50s, early 60s and this one is actually manufactured in Kilbowie because you can find the ones that are the 285J that would have been manufactured at the St. John's plant in Canada. So I have something from Scotland which is something that I actually like about my vintage sewing machines especially the singer ones. I am so happy if they are from the next one is this really lovely looking case of the Joneses 6818. So this is from the 1960s. And the only reason that I bought this is because I have a beloved Brother 66, vintage Brother 66, that has that is missing some machine feet. And I thought that if I got this one, I'd be able to use its feet because it came with a full complement of sewing machine feet. And I picked this up on eBay for only 20 quid. And I went to collect it. I was very excited, came home. I uh, immediately tried the sewing machine feet onto my brother 66 and sadly they did not fit, which was very frustrating. And it wasn't a machine that I was particularly keen on in terms of the stitch quality, it wasn't the best either. So I ended up harvesting the motor to use on other Singer machines because that's the brilliant thing about most of these vintage sewing machines is that the motor, the drive motor was interchangeable amongst the different brands. So as you can see there, there's the remainder of the electrical connection from where the motor was. And sadly, the sewing machine fit did not uh, work on any of my other brother slash Jones's sewing machines. Joneses started off selling sewing machines by themselves but eventually through the years they ended up being a part of the brother sewing machine company uh, where you know the Japanese one so that's why some of the machines that will say Joneses are also brother so that's why I was pretty certain that these machine fit would fit onto my brother one even though this is a joke. You may look at this case and be reminded of those old LP uh, containers, LP cover containers, but it isn't. It is the case for the Singer Featherweight 221K, which is just the most adorable sewing machine. So this was designed to be a portable sewing machine. It is very famous and big amongst the quilting community. I picked this up on eBay for only £86 plus postage and packaging, which was a steal because a lot of the auctions that I had uh, played in hoping to win, the prices would go in excess of £200, £300, £400. So the only reason that I got lucky on this is that it actually is missing a crucial part. It doesn't stop it from running though, but it does mean that that sewing is actually difficult and that is why most other people hadn't bothered to bid on it but apart from that it is in mint condition as you can see the decals are absolutely gorgeous to look at everything moves the needle goes up and down and I did the works of oiling it and fixing it and checking the motor but here's the thing that was missing from it the bobbin case okay so this is a very specific design it was meant to be shallow so most other singer sewing machines the bobbin cases are interchangeable but because this one was designed to be small and portable it is very small and i ordered um the one that was available on ebay at the time but it doesn't actually fit you need a very specific one according to the manufacturer and that's what other people had noticed in the pictures and that's why they hadn't bid on it 
but still I don't mind I love it it is such an adorable uh, machine and I do enjoy taking it out when I do my uh, regular sewing machine maintenance it is beautiful to look at I definitely do need to get that bobbin case sorted but apart from that this is a lovely lovely little looking machines and if you do search these up on YouTube you will get so many fantastic variations of people painting them in different colors Okay, going from featherweight, we're going to move to the big daddy of them all. This is my Singer 401G, which I absolutely love. It is a beautiful, heavy-duty, robust, slant shank sewing machine that is just packed with so many things. And one thing that I love about it is how it looks like a Star Trek machine. In fact, in my family, this is referred to as the Star Trek machine because it's just got that lovely 1960s futuristic look. And as you can see, it's got a European plug there and an adapter. And I picked this up on eBay and I got it for about 60 quid. So it has got um, embroidery stitches and it's got this knob that you can use to do up to over 30 different types of embroidery stitches and designs and it's got cams and gears absolutely fabulous but what's really awesome about it is that it's a slant shank which means that it does the thing that my tilt table would do so you've got better visibility when you're sewing so right over there, you can see the different stitches that you can actually do depending on the combinations that you select um, using that big knob over there. It is designed for twin needle uh, capability, which back in the day was just so revolutionary. The plate is a lifting throat plate, which you can use for darning and embroidery as well. And it is just such a wonder and a joy to sew with this. And I tested it using different fabrics and from light to heavy weight, it just handles them with ease. In fact, I sewed my husband's uh, cashmere uh, coat on this and just beautiful, beautiful sewing uh, joy. I had to do the standard maintenance on it, sorting out the foot pedal, taking things apart and just giving it a good oiling and it works beautifully. This is one of my favorite sewing machines. It is very heavy though, it's not the sort of machine that you just pick up and uh, use, even the case is very sturdy and steadfast. So we move on to another um, uh, heavy duty sewing machine. So this one is the Faf 90, which I very luckily found uh, on eBay for only £19.99 with local collection. And I believe that's why I won the auction because it was a local collection. And it is a portable one, but it is heavy, absolutely heavy. It works beautifully, absolutely beautifully to use. And as you'd expect of German engineering, the precision of the parts is just amazing. I'm always quite hesitant to take apart um, FAF machines because there isn't as much information out there about their maintenance as there is for Singer. So in terms of the electrics and things like that, I had to rely very heavily on my husband to help out with that, as I always do because I am scared of the sound of you know static and electricity. But it's a really beautifully made machine and you can see how in terms of design it was actually going in the polar opposite direction to what Singer had going. So with Singer you had the curve, the more curve and the gold and black decals, whereas this is more minimalist design considering that this is from the 50s and the 60s. So this one, um, it didn't come with a manual. I had to find a manual online, which is always available, but it had a really nice solid uh, footrest. And the inside of the Fafs is completely different to the inside of the Singer as well. You know, some of the shaft mechanisms are very similar, but in terms of the belt that they use, it's very hard to come by the spare parts for the Fafs, which is why I'm quite hesitant to uh, mess about with them too much. But the ones that I do have are in working condition, and this was a really good price that I got cleaned up beautifully and as always because of these heavy machines you don't lift them up with the case handle because they may uh, break it's something that I have to lift up using both hands
we're staying in the Puff universe now. Sorry, I don't know how to pronounce that. It's like Puff or Pfuff. Uh, no idea. Anyway, I'm just gonna go with Puff for now. And this one is the Puff 91, which, oh gosh, you guys, this has got such a funny story behind it. So what had happened was that I won an auction for a Singer 99K and it was local collection for £9.99. So I went to pick it up um, at this charity shop that does online auctions with the things that they get. And when I rocked up, they had accidentally given away my Singer machine to somebody else and they couldn't get in touch with the other person and the person hadn't come back because they, you know, it had been collected two days before I, came, I rocked up to collect mine. So they then found themselves, they felt really bad about it. So they, came, they were like, we have another sewing machine that has just come in and if you're interested, you can have that instead because we feel so bad that you came all this way. And I was like, okay, fine, I'll take a look. And then they came out with this and um, and I was like, yeah, sure, that's fine. So I got this for only £9.99 and it is in mint working condition and it's actually the better version of the Fuff 90. So as you can tell right there, it's got a convertible bed so that you can actually do sleeves and it's really beautiful it sews beautifully so you can add the table to make it uh, bigger but this was designed for really heavy duty uh, sewing and you can see the minimalist design coming in there as well and it's got this really cute little accessories box and it's got the full complement of the accessories which just those in themselves are worth way more than £9.99 that I had paid for it. It's got a really beautiful foot pedal that just reminds me of you know I feel like I'm driving a Ferrari whenever I'm using this um, the case is not in the best condition, but it is a really beautiful case that reminds me of picnic um, hampers. And my husband had the most fun with the electrics on this one because he, he was just absolutely fascinated with how everything uh, went together on the inside. As I said, these buffs, they, are, they did try to differentiate themselves from uh, Singer by offering something that was quite different and unique and I think that they did do that. In fact, Puff is still going now. My cover stitch is a Puff uh, Hobby Lock 4.0 but it's beautiful but it is heavy. I am telling you, you can build your biceps with this. It's got twin needle capacity and it's just such a beautiful, um, intuitive, easy to use machine that has been a great addition to my collection actually. I really love this machine because of the story of how I actually got it and there's also the bonus that it came with a mint condition instruction manual. We head on back to Singer now with this beautiful Singer 99K which I got on eBay for £46. It came with the full set of accessories and feet and it is an early hand crank machine and there's just something so wonderful and very relaxing, very zen like about using these hand cranks and I'm, I really, I desperately wanted one in my collection so when this became available I um, I got it and the kids enjoy uh, playing with this. So it came it came in a Brentwood case which, which is that really lovely curved uh, case but of course you know one of the hints that I can give you with uh, vintage sewing machines is never lift them by the handle. So it's got a serial number there that can be checked and that not that you see that that adjusts the stitch length and it's just got so many beautiful details from the face plate so the decals on this particular one are the filigree decals and I love those and it's one of the reasons why I paid so much extra to actually get my hands on this and it comes with this entire range of heirloom sewing accessories. So you can do smoking, you can do pleating, you can do gathering and ruffling. There's a lot of fancy things that you can do and attaching bias bindings in one go. And I loved some of the accessories. They're like this very cute little cylindrical casing where you keep the sewing machine needles. It's just like fabulous, really beautiful. It feels like stepping back into time. And the thing that I love about these vintage sewing machines is I can also try and imagine who was the person that had this machine. And when I'm using them and cleaning them up, I try and honor that uh, particular heritage. But it sews really beautifully as well. It does take some getting used to actually using a hand crank because you're using one hand to turn and you're using the other hand to 
guide uh, the fabric or whatever you're sewing through but I, you know I kind of feel like if you're gonna collect vintage sewing machines you gotta have the hand crank because that is where it all started from so the thing about the 99k is it was designed around the time that um, electric motors were then coming into play so it's one of the few machines that you could get you could have bought originally as a hand crank and you could easily convert it by attaching an electric motor to it. So the later versions are a little bit different because they do have an electric motor, but they do look similar. Apart from the stitch length, instead of a knob, they actually have a lever to it. But I love it. It's really, really beautiful singer quality. The amount of craftsmanship that goes into these uh, vintage things is just amazing. And if you look at the handle, it's really beautiful to look at. But again, never pick up a vintage sewing machine using the handle, no matter how much, how pretty it looks. Now we're moving over to 1969 with the Singer Stylist 457 sewing machine, which was one of the first Singer sewing machines that wasn't completely made of metal. So whilst most of the parts were metal, the spool pin was made of plastic and it it, it showed because it's kind of like at this point that the quality of the sewing machines kind of started declining once they started introducing plastic parts and in fact one of the problems that I had with this machine was that we just could not fix the timing on it so I actually bought another vintage sewing machine in order to harvest parts from it to try and get it to work but um, it failed and it had a motor which we ended up having fun with by taking apart and trying to fix as you can see there. This is a Singer 15k that I got for £10 on eBay and it's missing a motor so it's not a hand crank one it's supposed to have a motor but the motor was removed and it is the famous Sphinx decal and I had been looking for ages because I really wanted this in my collection I love the Sphinx decal and I was very lucky to come across this the decals are in near mint condition although everything else not so much now how you can identify a 15k is that you can tell with the tension assembly that's on the face plate and the face plate has got some glorious designs on it this is one of those machines that I actually just have sitting in the office as a decorative piece but I have attached a motor to it and to check if it works and it does work but I just need to make time to do the cosmetic fixes that need to be done it didn't come with the case but it is still a beautiful piece of machinery as a side note, the Singa 15K was the most successful sewing machine design ever produced and it was in production for over a hundred years. And it was so successful in fact that it spawned a huge amount of what are called 15K clones. And this Novum sewing machine that I'm showing you right now is also another so a 15K clone. This is one that I found for £10 on Gumtree. Gumtree is very similar to Craigslist for those of you that are in America or Canada, but it is a really cute looking machine. Now, the clones, the Singer 15K clones, are actually, in my opinion, nearly just as good as the actual Singer um, machines themselves, because what happened was at the end of World War II, uh, basically companies like Singer gave their blueprints to Japanese companies to try and help them improve their economy and that's where you get the Singer clones coming from. So they would be made using the same Singer blueprints but they would badge them using uh, different names like uh, Novum and you'll find that you would see a lot of them. But what I like about that is you've got the stitch plate here which actually gives you a little bit of information about the type of thread and what needle you should use and the stitch plate also shows you uh, seam allowance uh, notes on there and you can tell it's a 15k clone because you have that tension on the thread plate and I'm just showing you what it looks like in the wooden case the wooden case is absolutely sturdily built as you can see there is support and buttressing in the corners there which is why these things survive for decades it sews beautifully it does a really beautiful stitches and definitely if you come across uh, clones don't discount them they're not clones in the way that you have clones in modern manufacturing but back in the day these were made to be just as good as the singers but they just couldn't badge them as a singer okay we're moving on to another heavy duty sewing machine one that builds your muscles from just lifting it by this point i couldn't even lift it I, as you can see i was just barely lifting it off the ground to turn it around and this is the faf 30 and this is a beast 
it is a beast of a machine and this is the one that you know i know that if i ever had to sew through four seams of heavy duty leather this puff is gonna do it because it is strong and it is powerful and it's got a really powerful motor on it it came with minimal accessories but it does come in the wooden case uh the base is wooden but the case itself is sort of like um you know, a faux leather, but not really strong uh, for the machine itself. And when I've tried using this, it, as I said, is just absolutely amazing. Now, I would have preferred the prettier looking faff, the one that's got like the really nice uh, black, the one that looked a little bit more like a singer. But, you know, I was lucky enough to find this for 20 quid uh, on Gumtree. So I got it. It's got a plain looking faceplate, but it will get the business done and it, it's got a different motor so the motor does it that it has isn't the original faf one it's a ydk which is a souped up motor and so i think that the previous owner used to use this for leather work so it's a really good one for that sort of thing up next is a new home vintage sewing machine from the 1960s so fun fact new home became janomi which is a japanese uh, japanese sewing machine company and so if you come across a vintage machine that says new home it's actually the janomi uh, company because that's what it changed its name to but I picked this one up for £10 on eBay and I got it really because I was very curious about these particular types of sewing machines that you definitely look at, you get a very 60s kind of vibe. So this machine would have appealed to people who didn't want the traditional looking singers but they wanted something more modern looking and it definitely screams vintage 60s. It is an incredibly heavy machine being made of a cast iron body although because it is from the 60s it's got plastic gears that drive the fancy stitches and it does have a zigzag stitch i've tried sewing with this and it is not the best quality stitch um definition that you can get but having said that i also have a 201k and a 401g which are just you know to me that that is the standard for what a perfect stitch should look like but it's still not bad for the price of 10 pounds and if you're looking to add something that has got that modernistic 60s vibe to it then this would be a great addition to it this particular one needed a new belt the belt had cracked um, probably because of sun damage but once that was sorted it was ready to go here's another 15k clone so this one's a brother 15k clone and this was one of my favorite restoration projects because when i got this i actually got it for free from somebody who was gonna throw it out and i'd gone to pick up a machine that she had sold on gumtree so i was like oh hey if you're gonna be throwing this out can i get it and it was filthy it was brown and it was just really dirty and i just took a saturday afternoon to work on it and clean it up and it came out looking gorgeous and it sews beautifully and again how you can tell that this is a 15k clone you've got that tension mechanism on the face plate most sewing machines now won't have that and even in the past there were very few sewing machines that had that but i had so much fun cleaning this up this was a proper sort of like you know rags to a proper cinderella story this made me feel like a fairy godmother for a sewing machine because i turned this from a little dirty ragamuffin to a beautiful looking tiffany colored sewing machine okay these ones were called the coffins uh, because they obviously look very macabre but this is the oh, one of the oldest sewing machines that i have in my collection and i picked this up for 99p on ebay this beauty here dates back to around 1895 based on the serial number and it's a bradbury and company high arm family sewing machine it's a hand crank and it is just really beautiful to look at because it's got that curved main shaft and it's got filigree decals which feature the duke of wellington that was the trademark for this particular company on the pillar and it's very similar in design to the Singer 48K, although 
um, this particular one predates the Singer 48K, but Singer as a company was just really good at marketing and uh, distributing their machines a heck of a lot better than other sewing machine companies, which is why they came to dominate the market, even though there were other companies that had been making sewing machines before Singer came onto the market. So I was very happy to find this and to have got it for 99p, it was an absolute steal. So. It's got an oscillating shuttle mechanism and an oblong shuttlecock and it's really fun to use and the kids love using this. It makes the most beautiful sound. I'll have to do a separate video where I just record the sound of this. It's so soothing that my children just have a lot of fun playing on this. Another machine that I have is a more modern Singer 99K sewing machine and this one's got the electric motor as well as the levered stitch length thing. I ended up giving this as a gift to a friend and I'm very happy that I did that. Thank you for watching. I've really enjoyed sharing some of my vintage sewing machines. Do check out the other videos on my Singer 66Ks, which is the Lotus version. I love that machine, as well as the 201K and the Frista and Rossman Cub for sewing machine videos. If you haven't already, please do subscribe. And if you found the video entertaining, useful, informative, then please do hit the like button. It supports the channel and I appreciate you very much. Until next time, lovely people, happy sewing. Bye.